To bake or not to bake? That is the question. What's going on, Performance Posse? It's Andrew coming to you from the Basement Workshop once again. I've got an interesting little video for you guys here today. It stems from a conversation I had at work just the other night. A fellow was explaining to me that he was looking to start making his own jigs, painting them, etc. But he wasn't comfortable baking the powder coat on in the oven in which he uses to cook his food. I have to say I'm on board with him on that. I wouldn't probably recommend putting lead into the oven where you cook your food on a daily basis. But he was unsure as to how his finishes would turn out if he didn't bake the finish on. I said I think the number one thing that happens if you don't bake the finish is you lose some durability. I don't think it really affects the quality of the paint job. But I don't know how much it affects the durability. So today we're going to paint up a couple of jig heads. We're going to bake one, we're going to leave one unbaked, and then we're going to test that durability and find out how much of a difference putting your Protec powder paints in the oven actually makes. Stay tuned. All right, so here we are over at my painting station. You can see what I've got here is a pair of half ounce flat side jigs. These are jig heads that I use for making hair jigs for fishing the Mississippi River for walleyes, uh, but I think they're going to serve a pretty good purpose for this test. Uh, I've got some blue Protec powder paint here. We're just going to get these painted up real quick. I'm going to stick one right here and let it dry. That's the one we're not going to bake. And then I'm going to throw one in the toaster oven. We're going to bake it for 15 minutes and then we'll come back and we are going to test the durability. I'm not going to go through all the specifics of how to paint these jigs. I'm sure you guys have all seen those videos before. For my heat source, I'm just going to use my alcohol torch. This is what I usually use for rod making, but it's nice and quiet for the purposes of this video. It's going to do the job just perfect. So we just want to get a good even heat on these and get them baked uh, dipped in finish. All right, there you go. That one's going into the toaster oven. I'm not going to be worried about if the hook eyes fill up or anything on this. I'm just going to go ahead and get them painted for the purposes of this video. I'm not actually going to use these to fish with. So again, like I said, I'm not too worried about how clean the hook eyes or anything like that are going to be. Just want to get them painted up and test some durability on these guys. That should be plenty nice and heated there. We're going to give this a quick dip. There you go. That one's ready to roll. We're going to stick that right in the styrofoam here and let that one sit. We'll let it sit for the exact same amount of time. I'm going to turn this toaster oven on for about 20 minutes. And when that dings, I'll be back with you and we will test the durability factor here. All right, so that was 20 minutes at around 300 degrees. My toaster oven runs a little bit hotter. I know Protec recommends 325 for 20 minutes, but I've used the infrared thermometer on this thing and it does run a little bit hotter. So I set mine at 300, that was 20 minutes. Let's get a closer look at these two jigs. It's gonna be a little bit warm, but should be okay. So there's the one that came out of the toaster oven. And now this is the one that we didn't bake. You'll see what I've done here is I put a little piece of masking tape on the hook shank just so that we can tell the two apart. I think to my eye, the finishes look very similar. I cannot see a whole lot of difference in the quality of the finish. Um, one thing that happened for sure is as I baked that, that hook eye closed up, but normally I would clean that all out before I I baked them, but here's the one that we didn't bake. You can see that's got a hope and hook eye in it. But uh, I don't really have a way to go out and test these jigs, drag them through the rocks or anything like that. So for the purposes of this test, I'm going to simply set these uh, jigs at about waist high and I'm going to drop them on the ground a handful of times and see if there is any difference in the finish after uh, a few drops onto my concrete basement floor. If you're anything like me and you're trying to skip docks, you're going to bang your jig off a dock here and there anyways. So 
should give us a fairly good representation of the durability of the finish. Stay tuned, I'm going to go get the camera set up over there and I'm going to start dropping these things onto the concrete floor. Alright, so here we go for the drop test. I'm just going to hold them, like I said, out about waist high and I'm going to drop them straight down onto the concrete floor maybe five or six times and just see if we get any difference in finish here. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Let's just go for ten right away. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And one more for an even ten. Here we go. Drop number ten. All right. That's ten drops. Let's go back over to the painting station and get a look at these under the light, see if we have any real differences here. All right, guys, so here I am back at my painting table. Um, first, we're going to look at the jig head that actually went into the toaster oven. I'm going to try to zoom in on this as best as I can. I think you can see that there is definitively some damage to the paint from dropping it on the concrete floor. Try to get a good look at that, get my shadow out of the way. I would say that that's about what I expected. The damage seems to be very limited to the impact area. Let's go ahead and get a close look at the one, uh, and just so you can see here, this is the one with the tape on it. This is the one that I did not bake. And you can see that one is also taking a substantial amount of damage. I think the difference in this one though is I'm starting to see, you know, bigger areas with no paint at all like that's a pretty big chunk missing right there and that's on the back side of the jig and we're starting to see some damage creeping into um, the flat side of the jig even on this one um, there you can kind of get to see how it's um, get a good look at how it's coming down onto the side of the jig head quite a bit more lead exposed on that one so yeah I'd say there's definitely more damage to this one Another quick peek at the one that went into the toaster oven. You can see again how that's uh, pretty well mitigated just to the areas where it's impacting the cement. Um, can you get away with painting and not baking? I would say, yeah, absolutely, probably, especially on these river style jigs where you're gonna be donating a bunch of them to the bottom of the river anyways but if you've got the toaster oven it's probably worth the 15 20 minutes of extra time for the durability um, certainly would be your call but i think the results are pretty clear from this uh quote unquote scientific experiment it was really scientific down here in the shop i'm sure you guys can tell well folks there you have it i think we generated some pretty conclusive results down here in the shop today in my opinion, it's definitely worth the extra 15 to 20 minutes to bake those powder coats on if you have a dedicated oven to do so. If you guys got some valuable information or if you just enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button, leave some comments below, I try to respond to all the feedback. Don't forget to become a member of the Performance Posse by subscribing to the channel. And stay tuned, you guys, i got some great videos coming up for you. I have a new jig mold I want to share with you, a new plastic mold I want to share with you, as well as a few other uh, videos I've got in the works here. So stay tuned, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, tight lines.